I have quite a few recollections about the total man uh, pivot. And the one that never leaves my mind is, is, is the most uh, frightening one. It is the day I was beaten up by his uh, security men. I remember it very clearly. Um, it was in April uh, 1991 um, when I got reports that uh, there were some people in Kirio Valley who were demonstrating against him uh, because of having grabbed their land. Uh, I, at that time I was a reporter with the weekly review. Uh, so I was called by some people in Kirio Valley. They told me they're having a meeting and uh, they wanted me to come over and they had brief notes about. I got a colleague of ours who was an intern. Uh, he was called Julius uh, Barcoret. He was an intern from the KIMC. He got a company car and drove down. Uh, we went and spent a night in Eldoret. And then in the morning drove down to the Kerio Valley. A very steep uh, incline. We met the guys who had invited us there. They told us that Bihut was coming to address them. They briefed us more about what it was. There were people who stayed in the land around the Flospa Mining Company. Bihut had bought the company from the government, or grabbed, probably. In those days, the grabbing was easier. I promised to resettle them on some other farms uh, towards Eldoret. One was called Growell Farm, and I think there was the Duke of Manchester Farm, which were both actually government farms, but uh, they had come into his possession. So, we were, the people had all assembled there, and he was waiting to, they were waiting for him to come. After a short while, a convoy of cars came in, uh, four-wheel drives, mostly there were parastatal cars from Kenya Power, uh, uh, and many other power, power companies, which he seems to have a, a, a relationship with. And as he was trying to address the crowd, they started going in. And I was busy sitting in the crowd, but making my notes and taking photographs. Then one of the security men spotted me. They didn't know there was any media there. And he came and pulled me out. And then he asked around, he found my colleague also and pulled him out. Uh, the auto was still speaking. We were driven to a settlement, or rather we were frog-marched to a settlement about uh, uh, 300 meters away, where we were locked in a house and thoroughly beaten and told to get out of that place and never be seen again. So they took our notebooks, they, dis they smashed the camera. We got into our car and drove. Our initial plan had been to drive to Eldoret, back to the hotel. But Balcoret said, no, no, no. We're going straight back to Nairobi. As we are driving up the valley, we see dust behind us. And we realize it is Biwot's convoy. So we think, are they chasing us or what? With a small, ordinary Toyota Salon car, it could not outrun their four-wheel drives. So we drove slowly, but they went and overtook us and zoomed away. We drove straight back to Nairobi. I think we got to Nairobi close to midnight. And as soon as I got home, somebody called me. One of the fellows who had been in touch with called me. And he asked whether we are safe. He said, we are okay, we are already in Nairobi. Then they had also called the nation. I think they talked to Muteki Jawa and informed him about the incident. Um, on Monday, I got back to work. And I told my boss what had happened, Hila Rinweno. He insisted we must report to the police. We went to the central police station. And the moment we mentioned it, the what's name, first, they all froze. We were moved from the report desk to a senior officer, to a more senior officer, to the CID officer. Eventually, nobody wanted to take our statement. 
eventually we ended up with the OCS. Again, we repeated the whole story. Even he didn't know what to do because when, once Biwot's name is mentioned, he was just freezing. Then eventually he made some calls, I don't know to who, and he was given the go ahead to take the statement. He gave an officer below him to take the statement. And we went away. But um, the matter was now escalating. We went back to the office. After a few days, we were called now from CID headquarters. Again, we went to CID headquarters. We repeated our statements. We explained exactly what happened. Within that period, we had also done our own investigations and found out the names of the people who had actually beaten us. One was a GSU officer who was in Biwok's uh, security detail. One was a local um, guys who hung around politicians locally. And the other one was one of the villagers there who also used to hang around Biwok when he was around. And we, we wrote fresh statements. We gave the names of the people who had beaten us. Oh, and we were told, okay, go back and wait for further communications. After a few days again, we were called. And that's when I realized that this matter had really escalated because we were asked to accompany a CID officer who was investigating the matter to carry you valid to the, to the scene of crime. What happened is that uh, our boss, Hilary Nueno, was pushing for, his, for the matter to be investigated. He had talked to the Noah Arapto, who was the director of CID then. I believe he had also talked to Zezakia Yugi, who was the uh, head of internal security, the PS for internal security. So it had reached that level. Mm -hmm. So on the day we appointed day, we went to CID headquarters. We were put in, a, in an unmarked police car and driven to the place. We showed the officers the place where we were pitted, where we were locked up. They actually arrested one person uh, who was the, uh, the local hanger-on and they confirmed the names of the other people who had beaten us. Uh, we came back to Nairobi. After a few days again we were called to, this time we were called to Kilimani police station for an identification parade. And we identified the, one of the guys who had beaten us. Uh, but then after that everything went cold. At one point they called us to go to GSU headquarters to identify the GSU officer. When we got there, we were told he has been transferred. And uh, after that, all inquiries drew a blank, nothing would ever happen, nothing would... And the matter died there.